Good morning and welcome back to our devotional series. We're going through uh, the Sermon on the Mount and we've just finished the section on the Lord's Prayer. Now Jesus brings us to a section on fasting. Now fasting may be something that, uh, depending on your uh, tradition, that you've heard a lot about, or most likely probably very little about. Uh, I think most times in the evangelical world at least, this isn't a topic that uh, gets brought up or preached on or uh, perhaps practiced much. Although I'm sure we've heard of it and maybe even done it, I, I wouldn't say it gets emphasized. But let's look at what Jesus has to say here about it because I think it is an important topic. Jesus mentions it on the Sermon on the Mount, so uh, we need to take, take it to heart of why he would mention this. So he says this, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So Jesus' first uh, point here, uh, first and foremost, um, is that when we fast, we don't do it for self-glorification. We actually do it for self-renunciation, right? We're doing it to die to ourself rather than build ourselves up and to be seen and have people praise us because we're so uh, holy or uh, su such a spiritual person, right? That's not the reason we're doing it. We're doing it to draw closer to God, to say no to our fleshly desires. So I want to quote Diedrich Bonhoeffer now in The Cost of Discipleship, which we've been quoting throughout this series, he says this on fasting, Jesus takes it for granted that his disciples will observe the pious custom of fasting. Strict exercise of self-control is an essential feature of the Christian's life. Such customs have only one purpose, to make the disciples more ready and cheerful to accomplish those things which God would have done. Fasting helps to dis discipline the self-indulgent and slothful will, which is so reluctant to serve the Lord and it helps to humiliate and chasten the flesh. By practicing abstemoniousness, which is kind of like abstaining from food and drink and self-indulgence, we show the world how different the Christian life is from its own. If there is no element of asceticism in our lives, if we give free rein to the desires of the flesh, taking care, of course, to keep within the limits of what seems permissible to the world, we shall find it hard to train for the service of Christ. When the flesh is satisfied, it is hard to pray with cheerfulness or devote oneself to a life of service, which calls for so much self-renunciation. So when we're, if I can summarize Bonhoeffer, he's saying if we're just caught up living as the world's living in self-indulgence, how can we die to self to, tr to truly serve the purposes of God? We can't, and this is why fasting is so important, because it really brings the flesh into check. It brings the selfish will and uh, nature that was within us in check and it helps us to die more and more to that old way of thinking to that old life and to really live out the gospel so prayer and fasting are two of the most fundamental uh, disciplines in the christian life and it's not that we're somehow that they're magic in and of themselves they're just tools that god uses to draw us closer to himself for time's sake I'll, we'll stop it there but i want to challenge you that here with this if you haven't fasted in quite some time, think of setting aside some time this week for prayer and fasting. Uh, the purpose of this discipline here is, is obviously not to be seen outwardly. It's not to draw attention to ourselves. In fact, we're to make it seem like everything's fine because we want to draw closer to God and we want to die to self. So maybe you can plan a time this week, maybe instead of cooking dinner or taking that time at lunch to go buy food, maybe set that half hour aside for a time of prayer and fasting. And, and then maybe start to make that a habit in your life. See if we cannot uh, use that as a way to focus our minds more to the Lord and draw closer to Him. Have a blessed day. We'll see you guys soon.